Good morning, guys. Welcome to Life Apollo's home of the most trusted beard and automotive news. Happy to have you here, like always. Now, I'm hitting you with the morning episode, guys, because we have a weird uh, breaking news story coming out of Tesla, specifically Elon Musk, that we got to talk about. Obviously, at this point, every time Elon Musk tweets or talks about anything of substance, uh, the world reacts in a pretty volatile way. And as always, we're going to give you your deuce of the automotive and supercar community on YouTube as well, covering a couple craters we haven't talked about in a little bit. Beard Nation, welcome to the show. Let's get ready to work. First up, guys, a ton of you told me to be covering VTune Garage's latest video. The title kind of gives away why we're talking about it. It's called Fixing Whistle and Diesel's Hellcat Frame. It was actually months ago that Whistle and Diesel messed up his brand new Hellcat, and the funny thing about that particular uh, crash, whatever you want to call it, it didn't actually seem to be intentional. Obviously, most of the destructive acts that Whistle and Diesel does are all on purpose. This one definitely did not seem to be the case, uh, but make sure to go check it out, guys. VTune Garage has a great video starting to go over some of the damage, all that kind of jazz, what they're going to be doing to fix it. Uh, and we speculated months ago what automotive channel was going to get a crack at working on one of Whistle and Diesel's cars. I have no doubt that VTune Garage is going to put out some great content on this particular vehicle. Make sure to go check it out, guys. Link for that video in the description below. Next up, guys, it appears that Gigi Papasavis's McLaren 720S has had some uh, issue. We're not entirely sure. There's a relatively vague post about it on Gigi's Instagram right now, showing a picture uh, of the sort of pre-rear-ended 720, saying, I am addressing this in a post, as many of you are messaging me regarding seeing my car stopped on the freeway yesterday. A friend of mine was taking my car in for service while I'm out of town, and they were rear-ended. It appears to be just cosmetic. Fortunately, it was going into the shop this week for V2. Anyway, stay tuned. Now, apparently there were some pictures floating around of what the crash looked like, but they all magically disappeared over the course of like a couple hours. So we don't have any pictures yet. Uh, if you saw something, feel free to send it my way. I imagine we'll get a post about it eventually. Gigi doesn't post that often to YouTube, but is more active on Instagram. But I'll say this, guys, when it comes to McLaren's uh, cosmetic damage isn't really like a thing as much as you would think. Uh, if you looked at like Alex Choi's 720 after we did the report on it, uh, getting all messed up, uh, just a five mile an hour fender bender was like, I think it was over $20,000 worth of damage, maybe like 30K. Uh, so I would imagine there's probably significant costs associated, even if it looks to be cosmetic here. Gotta mention a great video from Cletus McFarlane, guys. This one titled, uh, Testing Our Humvee to New Depths. Is it ready to drive completely? completely underwater. Do me a favor, guys, go watch the first 30 seconds of this video. Uh, you'll get a good idea what the rest of the video is like. It's a ton of fun. Uh, what else can you really say? Cletus McFarlane has some of the craziest views in the automotive community because of all the ridiculous stuff that he does. Go check it out, guys. Link for that video in the description below, as always. Next up, guys, I gotta give you a big clue in on some incredible content coming uh, to the Drag Times and Savage Garage channel. Drag Times has a new video out called My Friend Bought a McLaren P1, and it's crazy fast. If you want to see the McLaren 765LT versus a McLaren P1, this is going to be your best chance to do so. I imagine we're going to get tons of videos out. Uh, they've been collaborating together over the last couple weeks a lot. Uh, some of that stuff is on Instagram on Savage Garage. Some of that stuff is on Drag Time's YouTube channel. Uh, but there are very few places, maybe if ever so far, that we've seen a 765LT uh, really push it hard against a hypercar of sort of yesteryear. Go check it out, a highest recommendation for these crazy videos. Then we got Jack Ultramotive, guys, with a very wholesome, uh, happy video. What else can I really say here? It's called Friends React to Revealing My New Audi R8 V10. I love the R8 V10, guys. I really want one in my garage, uh, maybe sooner than you might think. Anyway, I didn't say that. Go watch Jack Ultramotive's video. It's a great sort of wholesome video. Jack Ultramotive does great content. Uh, what else can I say? Go check it out. All right, next up, guys, let's talk the big news. Uh, from Elon Musk concerning Tesla. Uh, this is a complete reversal from a position they just took a couple months ago. The Drive has a great article out on this. Uh, just, I believe, uh, yesterday, Tesla will stop accepting Bitcoin over environmental 
environmental impact of mining, and the price of Bitcoin obviously plunged after Elon Musk took a stand against it on Twitter. Uh, the first paragraph here gives you sort of an understanding of what is actually going on here. Uh, Tesla made news back in February of just this year by announcing it had invested $1.5 billion into Bitcoin and would soon be taking it as a form of payment. That helped spur the cryptocurrency onto all-time highs north of $50,000 in the following weeks. But, and here's the crazy thing, CEO Elon Musk turned all of that on its head today, stating that Tesla will no longer accept Bitcoin as payment, nor purchase any further holdings over environmental concerns regarding the energy needed to mine the cryptocurrency. Uh, we actually have Elon Musk's statement right here, guys. Uh, Tesla has suspended vehicle purchases using Bitcoin. We are concerned about rapidly increasing use of fossil fuels for Bitcoin mining and transactions, especially coal, which has the worst emissions of any fuel. Cryptocurrency is a good idea on many levels, and we believe it has a promising future, but this cannot come at great cost to the environment. Tesla will not be selling any Bitcoin, and we intend to use it for transactions as soon as mining transitions to more sustainable energy. We are looking at other cryptocurrencies that use less than 1% of Bitcoin's energy transaction. He talked about some of the energy spikes here, uh, threw up a graph that sort of explains sort of what has happened over the last uh, couple years in particular, which kind of makes me wonder, uh, you can kind of see it here, things were already spiking into 20 and 21. How did they not see this when they made the big announcement back in in February. Uh, it seems like, well, I, I, I don't want to speculate too much. Now, following that post by Elon Musk, guys, uh, the post had an almost instantaneous drop in Bitcoin prices, down 14% uh, over the last day at the time of writing and dipping below $50,000 for the first time since late April. It's since leveled out right around $50,000. Uh, the statement has drawn suspicion of, of a deliberate move to influence the Bitcoin price, uh, far from the first time the Tesla CEO has been accused of trying to move markets. It seems like any time that Elon Musk does anything on Twitter, uh, his influence has massively uh, volatile effects on, on the markets, on cryptocurrency, uh, on his own Tesla stock. It's kind of crazy to witness. Now, the funny thing here, guys, uh, people are already talking about Dogecoin here, uh, saying that like, oh, like, you know, he's, when he's talking about other cryptocurrencies, he's talking about Dogecoin as sort of a replacement. Uh, sweet Lord, I can't imagine what that would look like, but I imagine it would be pretty insane if he announced he was accepting Dogecoin because it didn't cost as much to mine. Some of the rest of the article here goes over how uh, crazy the energy consumption is and why Elon Musk decided to start talking out about it. So what do you guys think? I really want to throw this back to you. I'm sure a lot of you out in our audience are more well-versed about cryptocurrency. I'm still a neophyte when it comes to that sort of stuff, but I'm doing my best to sort of get up to speed on it. But what do you guys think about it? Do you think it was a statement deliberately designed uh, originally back in February to cause the prices to rise like crazy, and now he's trying to do something else? It's kind of a weird thing to discuss. Uh, Elon Musk has so much influence over anything that he says that it's hard not to take a look at it and sort of the impacts of what he does on a daily basis. I guess it's appropriate to mention that I've now noticed that a number of super car dealerships are starting to accept Dogecoin as forms of payment. So maybe it's all an elaborate scheme uh, to make Dogecoin sort of blow up even more than it already has. Anyway, let me know in the comments below if you know something about the cryptocurrency stuff that we talked about today that I don't. It's very likely that you do. We're gonna do our best to keep on top of it, let you know what's happening in the bigger news, and we're gonna move on to our next story. Next up, guys, I wanna mention CarWow's latest video review, Mini Cooper S 2021 review. Uh, the reason why I'm mentioning this, guys, is because I watched this particular video because after doing the BMW experience uh, out at the Thermal Club, we got a chance to mess around with some fully kitted out Mini Coopers, and we had just an absolute blast. We were thinking about buying a super cheap one and then doing a lot of crazy stuff to it and just kind of messing around with it, doing the J-turns, all that kind of jazz. But anyway, Carwell has a great video out on the newest Mini Cooper. Go check it out. Let me know what you think about it. A very intriguing video out by Ideal Cars. This one called Obscure Cars You've Never Heard Of. Uh, I, I like these sorts of videos from Ideal Media because I learn a lot about uh, car manufacturers that you just don't normally think of. Obviously, we all know like Ford and Lamborghini and Ferrari, all that kind of jazz. But there are so many other sort of niche uh, automotive manufacturers 
manufacturers uh, in between all of that that still make fantastic or at least very interesting cars. Ideal Cars has a great video out on it. I think you guys will learn something kind of cool. I get a chance now to talk about Carfection once again. Their latest video called Lamborghini Huracan STO First Look is just everything that I want in sort of a, a beautiful car uh, menagerie of stuff. I don't really know how else to describe it. Carfection does really interesting and high level work and they are criminally underrated in the YouTube world as far as I'm concerned. Go check it out. Tell me what you think about their Huracan STO video and come back here and let me know. Next up guys, watch Share Go uh, with a video that how do we not recommend this just based on the title alone, rats destroyed the wiring harness on my $5,000 Corvette. So many chewed wires. Uh, watch Air Go has some of the best content in like the Hoovies Garage, Tavares Rebuild World. He needs some credit. Go check him out, guys. I think you'll really like the kind of stuff that he does. Uh, he recently bought a crazy old fire truck and was sort of trying to repair some of the stuff on that. Lots of great content out there. The guy grinds out great content pretty much every day. I think you'll really enjoy it. Then you got cars across Texas, guys. Jeffrey Stars McLaren and Senna shuts down supercar show. Uh, the reason why I recommend this, Cars Across Texas seems to be a great guy. We're gonna try to cover his work more often. Uh, he got really big, really fast off of some of his like big Karen neighborhood videos. Uh, and he's continued to put out great content ever since then. Lots of car shows, that kind of jazz. The McLaren Senna they're talking about, you guys have probably seen on Stradman's uh, video from like, I think it was like over a year ago at this point. Uh, great stuff from Cars Across Texas. Make sure to check it out. And we got a barn burner from Throttle House, guys. Uh, 2021 Porsche 911 Turbo S versus a very interesting Audi R8 V10. Uh, incredible matchup. Throttle House just absolutely kills it every time they put up a video. If you're not following their channel, you're missing out big time. And folks, I think that's about all I've got for you guys today. Uh, my, my upload schedule might be a little bit weird the next couple days. I'm going up uh, to visit my brother who's getting promoted to captain. I'm very excited about this. Uh, he's in the army. It's going to be a pretty cool day. But anyway, guys, trying to spend some time with family, but we'll probably still upload a couple times when I'm up there. But anyway, have a great rest of your day. Let me know what you thought about today's video in the comments below. Make sure to stay safe, sane, and healthy. That's all I've got. Bye.